up, happy people? So we got a new project today, and we got a classic retaining wall, failing retaining wall, and rebuilding it. So the question was, hey, we got a retaining wall in here that's got some trouble. Can we come in? Can you, uh, you know, can you come in and repair it? Well, there's one answer to that question. Yeah, we can repair it. Tear it all down. Start over. Build you a brand new one. It's built right. So Ben here is saying there's no way he could screw this up. But what I was just got done chiding him about was <laughs> always do your measurements from your zero point. Zero point being the top of the step right here. And we were trying to figure out how low to make our excavation for this wall, which we did successfully figure that out. But we did the, mount, the calculations twice, what to decide whether we want three courses or whether we need three courses or four courses. And uh, the argument was what? That we put math, that we calculate math on top of math. So he wanted to calculate the three course wall block and then, oh, just add another one on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what happens is you screw things up. You screw things up. Maybe, maybe nine times out of 10, but you screw things up when you add math on top of math. Because, hey, Ben, what happened about four weeks ago? Someone screwed up the porch. Oh, why? I have no idea. I don't know what the heck he was doing. Because he added math on top of math. That's why. <laughs> You're just going to get rid of me. Go get the excavator and we'll bury you. I'm going to do what? We're going to tell everyone what separation fabric is for, like you have in the last 400. Maybe they didn't watch the video. Oh, okay. Am I allowed to say it again? Uh, yep, sure, go ahead. It's so what I deal with every day. Usually it's better than that, but... So yeah, this is separation fabric. <laughs> the point of separation fabric is that it keeps the, our stone base separated from the subgrade underneath it. We don't want dirt and mud pushing up in our subgrade, so... That's that. It's basically just uh, a stability factor. So we're gonna start putting our stone base on top of the separation fabric and compacting it with our compactor. I hope you can hear me. He's loud. We're dumping our 2A stone base into the sling. Excavator's sitting up there. We're just gonna go right up there. You get that? Just like that. Yeah. This thing is the slickest little tool. Now that was slick. Didn't even break a sweat. Never ending drama. We have water line, sewer line, gas line. Water line's deep, it's out of our way. Sewer line, eh, not so much. Gas line, it's a problem. Basically we'll have to cut our wall block around it, it's that much of a problem. Eh? Eh, what do you do?
Happy Monday morning to you. We're back here, new week, fresh start, and I'm gonna say we're wrapping this job up tomorrow night. That's my prediction. Ben was in here on Friday while I was out doing photography and uh, basically got that wall almost done, except for some cap. And um, we're gonna start laying in this wall right here today. I'd like to get this thing, I'd say it's probably gonna be feasible to get this thing pretty well laid today. Um, and then do things like cap and detail work tomorrow. Wrapping up all the dirt work and all that. Not a whole lot, basically working off the street here. As you can see, makes for a bit of a challenging job site, but very little cleanup then too. So what you got going on there, Ben? Broken 45, how do you get this thing off? It's a good question. Maybe violence? I think this thing will work. That looks like a 22 and a half, which actually, what it's was? A 22 and a half. Good. It's not gonna work, no. We got pipes everywhere. This is the joys of working in a city project. We have water, sewer. Ben, how do you how do you know that that's sewer? Stick your nose in and find out. Is that how you do it? How you do Sniff it? test? Yeah. Okay. And gas. And that gas line is not deep at all. Right up there, it was like two inches below the surface of the concrete. Just incredible. I can't believe they get away with stuff like that. If we'd have hit that thing, oh my goodness. Let's not even talk about that. But, so we're gonna work around all that stuff there. Get this thing laid in. We're pretty close to having the space up where it needs to be. Time to compact it in. We got some spectators this morning. Okay, well that's a beautiful site right there. We got a beautifully flat, straight wall. So it's time to core fill this first level and then we're on to the easy part, slapping up course as a wall block and geogrid of course. But I'll show you a few more steps of the things we do to prevent wall failure as opposed to like the wall that was in here. Just so you kind of get an idea of what makes a difference. Right there is our step. You can see right there's stone dates. Right there's the buried course, the footer course for this wall. And then we step it up one step because we had to go over top of the gas, sewer, all that jazz. And it's still below grade. The bottom of this block is still below grade. Ben's putting in our clips, which is the structural part of bonding one course to the other. are heavy somewhere in the range of 100 pounds a piece we need to weigh one we have course number two laid in our drainage is in this is perforated corrugated drain pipe behind this wall here and it exits out through the wall down here so that, see this pipe? Yeah, it comes right in through here and it exits through the wall right there as a drain. So this water, any water that builds up behind this wall can build up and exit right through that drain without causing any pressure on this wall and causing it to fail. So one of the key things of building a retaining wall properly is uh, managing your water, managing your, managing your moisture properly so that Friesenthal won't eventually push it over. So right now, we basically have to extend the footer right here. I have to do another little bit of uh, stone base so that we can get our last piece of block laid in there and keep working our way into that return. And that's course number three, four, five, and six. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to put a step in the base course of your wall. So let's say you have a grade, you're building a retaining wall up a slight incline and uh, suddenly you got like two courses of wall block underneath the, the final grade level where you're never gonna see it. So like, well, how do I step this up, keep on going? I'll show you how to do it very simply, very easily. So here is basically, I am at the end of my, this is my second course. I already have one step in underneath here. This is my second course of wall block coming in through here. And I'm at the point here where I want to pack this in, do a step, and uh, so I can run my next wall block further out past the end of this block, but I can't suspend it in midair. It's gotta be supported underneath that. So this is how we do this step. So first I'm gonna shovel this full of 2A stone. It's a 2A modified, it's like a, it's like a, right here it is. 
It's like a three quarter inch stone base with fines. It's what we put in the base course of our wall block, of our, all of our retaining walls. I'm gonna shovel that in there, then compact it, then a setting bed of number nine wash stone, and then I'm ready for my wall block. All right, so I have this shovel full of stone. Time to compact it. So now we have this 2A stone compacted in here and we use a jumping jack because of how tight corners we had. Otherwise we would use one of those plate compactors. But because of these tight corners, I use a jumping jack. And now you can see my the top of my 2A stone base is about an inch lower than the top of my block. And that is on purpose because now I'm going to put in my fine stone, a number nine size washed stone in here as my setting bed. And I'll screed that off, level it off. And then it's ready to transition from hard block to another step of base stone. So now we have a round one inch steel pipe buried right here. And what we'll do is we'll take our laser transit that is set up. We'll read the surface of this block because that's what we're matching. And then we will adjust this until it reads bang on. Right there. So now that we have our laser level set, we can go from the top of this block and match the top of that metal screed pole. Now that reads bang on and that reads bang on. So now we know if we drag our hand trowel over the top of this pole, it's going to match the top of our nines are going to match the top of this wall block perfectly. Now we can pull this pole out, fill in that gap, and we're ready to go. Now you have good hard compaction. You want to make sure that you get good hard compaction all three sides around the block. You don't want to just stop right there because that'll keep on settling and you might end up having some settles between this point and your base. First layer of geogrid. This is the top of the second course. The other course is completely buried as a footer course on the ground. And we're going to lay in our geogrid. If you remember, this wall was falling over. It didn't take much to push it over. And one of the reasons that it was failing, I'd say the key reason it was failing was because of lack of drainage material behind the wall. You can see here we have a perforated pipe and a whole bunch of clean stone. Nothing but clean stone behind this wall. And the reason for that is any groundwater that comes down through this bank has an escape, follows that pipe that's buried just a few inches below behind this wall, and it makes an exit right there. So it has, an, has the ability to seep out, which in turn does not allow any pressure to build up behind the wall, as well as does not allow moisture to be to stay behind the wall because if there were moisture this is what made that old wall fail if there's moisture behind a retaining wall winter comes it freezes what happens to water when it freezes it expands so it freezes and thaws freezes and thaws and over time that whole thing just starts leaning forward every time winter comes and gives another freeze cycle and pushes it forward a bit more until eventually it falls over which is what was happening to the wall that we ripped out of here but with proper drainage, we never allow that moisture to grip have, you know, we never allow that moisture to exist behind the wall, and we eliminate that problem. So, back to the geogrid. It's this stuff right here. Now, the drainage is one key point to building a retaining wall that won't fail. This stuff is another key point for retaining walls four feet or more, depending on the wall block you're using. Some wall blocks, it's less than four feet. But this is a very heavy structural uh, wall block. But what this stuff is, it's a structural grid. It's very strong, extremely strong, and it gets pinched between every two rows of wall block. And then what it does is it goes back behind the wall. And once we have our next row of wall block laying on here with that geogrid pinched in between, we will then dump our next level of clean stone on top of all this. And we'll actually run that plate compactor very lightly and gently behind this wall on top of that to just lock that stone into this geogrid. So suddenly you just don't, you don't just have a vertical element holding this wall back. Now you have a horizontal element that goes way back into the bank. It goes as far back into the bank as the wall is tall. That's one of the rules with geogrid. Geogrid should go as far back into the bank as the wall is tall. So if this were an eight foot high wall, we want that geogrid going back eight feet on the last level. So what that does is it just ties the entire wall back into the bank so that it's just locked in there. It can withstand a ton of force 
without actually failing and falling forward. So, let's get to it. Good morning, happy people. We got a thunder shower last night, which was perfect because we are so dry right now. This, this whole job site was an absolute dust bomb. So, settled the dust a little bit and it's not raining now. What more could you ask for? So, right now, we are focusing on this wall right here. This is that little wing wall up here at the top that we are that we rebuilt and uh, we're going to focus on getting this cap down here today. This is an existing drain line that comes from his spouting further up. So we're rerouting that around the wall out there to the street and uh, leveling off a little area right here. The homeowner would like a place to put his trash cans on garbage pickup day. So we're going to level that off a little bit while we're recreating all this. As soon as we have all the little detail work done around here, we are moving down to this wall and we're going to finish it. So we basically got that graded off. Just need to level that out a little bit and we'll put that's ready for stone. And Ben's here setting these couple of paving stones in for him. And uh, we installed that new drain line. Let's cover it up a little bit right here. But you can see right there's a new pop-up drain, which works a lot better than just daylighting out with that black corrugated pipe because that stuff will crush eventually. We have another drain line coming over from the other side of the house that we need to daylight through our wall right here. So that, that pipe right there with that green thing on the end um, needs to get rerouted punch over through the wall right down about there so that's what I'm gonna do right now Okay, so we now have this geogrid laid in here and it's very important that the, the geogrid itself is level. You don't want it slanting uphill or downhill behind the wall that reduces its structure and its strength. So it's level on top of, see if you notice we had to dig out five, six feet behind this wall so we have room for the grid. This wall is about five feet high so not even quite, no it's not even five feet, it's four and a half feet. So we're actually going a little bit overkill. Rule of thumb is geogrid should go as far back into the bank as, the, as your wall is high. So we're going a little bit overkill with it, but rather do that than under, you know? But the two biggest things that make a retaining wall built right and not set up to fail is proper drainage, which we have our drainage pipes there. And uh, for walls that are, depending on the type of wall block you're using, for this wall block it's four feet. For walls that are four feet and over, Geogrid. Geogrid gives it that strength, locks it into the bank behind it, and prevents pushover. So now we are going to finish, we're going to fill this whole cavity up here with another layer of stone up to the height of that wall block. And then we're going to set another grid of geogrid between the next course. So there'll be two levels of geogrid in the, behind this wall, and it's going to be rock solid. It's not going anywhere. All right, Ben, now you can start up the skid loader and make a whole pile of noise, all right? <laughs> Seems like every time I want to video something, he starts up the machine and runs it. They can't hear anything. Have you guys seen the truck we got today? Oh my goodness, we are in Suzy Q. My truck needed to go in for some work. And so we got the legendary Suzy Q. Suzy Q has quite a history with custom landscaping. She's a she's a female. We refer to her as she. And uh, she's been around probably longer than any of the rest of us guys. So she needs respect. You know.
the time lapse just died. So that's it for that other battery I got today. We are just now slapping on this cap. It's got this corner fixed up and uh, we're gonna cut some cap around the curb here and we are wrapped. We've officially made the last cut, just washing off some of the dust off the top of this cap here. We just got hit with a rain shower while I was cutting so it puts a like a residue on top that would stain it if we weren't in, if we wouldn't wash it off. All that's left to do is put some topsoil up here behind the wall, seed some grass, and it's a wrap. Hey, get <laughs> nice froggy. Oh, hey! <laughs> you see that black geotextile fabric there behind the wall? That's simply to keep the dirt that we're putting in behind the wall now to see grass on from migrating down through that clean stone behind the wall over time. If it would, if the fabric were not there, that dirt would eventually migrate down through that clean stone and we would have a risk of freeze and thaw pushing this wall over. So that's why that's there. Keep the stone stone and keep the dirt clean. What do you think? We had a wall, retaining wall that uh, was falling over and we uh, just couldn't deal with it any longer. So we uh, called Tussie Mountain and they came over and gave us an estimate. And uh, we liked the estimate and we went up and picked the stone. And then when they came, uh, finished a beautiful product here for us. We're very happy. And that right there, people, is a wall that's gonna be there for decades. That thing is not gonna fall over. Homeowners made the right choice here.